Yeah. Your name's Jill, Ni yeah. Jill Niles. <laughs> I could remember the last name. Oh, I just couldn't remember the first. Too many people. <laughs> and Norwich Rack. That's what I remember. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, back in the old days. Okay. Anne. 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 at this time. Um, we have a number of Conservation Commission members here. If you have comments other than related to why I think you're here, we would welcome you to speak. And, hey. <laughs> and if not, do we have someone online, Nina? Uh, we have Blake, who's there for the same reason, I would think. Okay. Been. And we have Hebe. Okay. I don't know if she has a question. Hebe, did you have a comment for us this morning? Thanks very much. I am um, just trying to follow up on Lyme Community Power. And I saw that was on the agenda. Okay, very good. Um, and then Jordan's the other one. So and Jordan's, okay. And, and Blake, you're here for the uh, discussion on Conservation Commission intervener status and a letter to FERC. Is that right? Yes. Okay, very yes. good. It's pertaining to the um, license renewal application from Great River Hydro. Yep. Okay, we'll okay. get that's on our agenda coming up shortly. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and nobody comments other than Conservation Commission from the audience. I will confirm that I do not. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, well, let's hop to minutes. David, I did see you had some edits. Yeah, subject to those, um, I'll, I'll move them. Okay, and Ben isn't here, so I will second them, and two out of three, we can go ahead and approve them. 
David I. And Judy I. So the minutes are approved. And so. Okay, very good. Moving right along. We have a manifest. Uh, David, are you comfortable approving the manifest, sure. the two of us? The manifest is for $718,000. $856.32, of which $650,000 is a school check. So, I will move the manifest. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Judy, aye. So that's approved. Well, you need to decide. Um, this is a special as I sent around a new thing. Um, and so anybody who works for the town of Lyme that is from Vermont um, needs to have additional withholding taking from their paycheck. So the town can have the employee uh, pay the 0.11% and the town will do the 0.33% or four. the town can do the total 0.44%. And this is a payroll tax. Yes it is and it has to do with Vermont's new legislation passed for child care. Mm -hmm. Do we have a Vermont resident employees? We have one. Okay, and so our discussion is whether we, the town pays the full of 0.44 right. or we split it with the employee. Right. Okay. Hmm. Which one would be the least amount of work for the town? The least amount of work? The sure. town just do it in the fourth one. So instead of washing the money. What's the amount of money at issue? I don't really know. I don't like to penalize a Vermonter, uh, and yet that's, you know, over the course of the year, a couple hundred dollars. Different bus is raised. Yeah. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, but it's, that's not us doing that. That's the no, state that's of Vermont. No, that's the state of Vermont. Right. right. And it's not, it's not a choice either. You know, you have to do it. You can just choose whether you're going to do the total or make him pay a percentage of it. Or make them. Yeah, Whoever. Twenty three hundred bucks. The forty four. The point four four. And it starts in July. Good morning, Ben. Morning. No, where's the park out there? I know. So what happened in place? We are discussing the um, this note we got from the state of Vermont that as a tax, as an employer of a Vermont resident, there is a new beginning July 1st law that the, there's a 0.44% tax for a child care contribution and it needs to be withholding from the paycheck. And uh, so it's 
if the town pays the whole share, it's $2,300, and if otherwise we can split it with the employee pays a percentage, and the town pays a percentage. Does the employee have children? Or? Yes. Okay. So, I don't know if you saw the letter. Um, no. It, yeah, it's in, it's in your packet. Yeah. yeah. Did you, you didn't send this around, did you? Yeah. I didn't see it. I don't think it was included with the big original packet. I think it came later. It came separate. Yep. So. Yes, it did come later. That's right. Um, yeah, and I talked to the payroll company. So. Okay. And they can do it. Yep. You know, look, the. Uh, this is rough for the employee, but it sounds like they're getting a child care benefit in the state of Vermont. They could move to New Hampshire if they don't want to pay this. I think it's sort of not fair to the other employees that we would be paying for, essentially paying for child care for, for them and not for everybody Yeah, I don't else. know enough about that. I don't know enough about the, um, the legislation and the rule and who qualifies and who does not qualify I may for it. Out of so, yeah. he, right. That person may or may not qualify for it. But I can certainly find out more and you can do this. You can make your decision at your next meeting. You yeah, want. you know, I would like to punt to the next yeah. meeting. I would like a little more. It um, doesn't start till July 1st. Right. And I guess I'd like to be fair, but if, yeah. Vermont is one of my favorite states. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a whammy at the last minute. <laughs> um, so, Ben, would you be okay if we continue this matter yes. to our next meeting? Yeah. Thank you. I'd rather have you find more than make a decision. We'll get some more information. After, right. Okay. You can look up that legislation. Uh, you should have had more. Then, since we have a large crowd here, and we have, let's talk about the letter to FERC, the Conservation Commission draft, and a discussion of intervener status. Um, thank you very much for Blake and for the Commission for getting us the draft of the letter. So we had a chance to look at that, and also um, a document going to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission looking for intervener status. We discussed this earlier with town council. David, would you like to take a lead off on the, the intervener status uh, sure, I, I looked at the motion and it looked um, fine and appropriate, although I'm not sure who the who the filer should be. Probably the yes. select board. Right? Your attorney said it needed to be the select board. Um, okay. At I this think, time. Yeah, I think we've sent that on to town council to okay. review. Has she gotten back with comments yet? She said it was fine, and okay. as long as the select board were the interveners. Okay. So and I in, think that's in our packet, it has been edited or amended to show the board signing this as the authorized representative. So then I'll take a motion uh, on the, uh, a motion on the motion for intervener status. I'll move it. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you, Dan. There it is. Is there discussion? Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. David, aye. And Judy, aye. Okay, we will file. This is very helpful having this come in uh -huh. in this manner. Uh, thank you all, and we thank. And thanks to Meg for writing. It. And yes, I was just going to say. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know if you remembered. Blake. Blake has a question. Okay, Blake. Yes. I just wanted to ask, um, who will take responsibility on the last page for? Um, revising the signatory from from what we turned in, which was Meg, as an authorized representative to uh, presumably you, 
Judy is chair of the select board or all three well, members it, of the select will, board? It will, it will be all three of us and we have a revised copy with our three names on it. Okay. I don't know, did you has, the has the date been changed for we because of when we passed this off to you? Um, the date of the document was the 14th of May. Are you going to change? I put in today's date. Today's date is on the signature line plate. Okay. Right. Would, would you please copy me on that, DS, for our files? Absolutely. Once it's signed and everything? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Blake and Meg and everyone. So, okay, that's step one. And step two, we have a letter. Uh, I can't talk and write, sorry. Coming <coughs> your way, my dear. Mm -hmm. I'm too down the tile. I'm hoping that'll be big today. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, technically, how do we go about filing this? Do we give it to Laura and have her attorney service to it? Okay. And then we have a letter, also dated May 14th, um, drafted by the Conservation Commission um, to go to FERC. It will include files uploaded from the line master plan, and I believe we also did want to attach or at least acknowledge that the town in 2020, the Board of Selectmen sent a letter as well dealing with this project. And I think that we had hoped that this letter would be sent again with signatures from the select board since it is uh, dealing with the town having issues. But I, I'm open to Ben and David who also have been looking at this issue and um, how you feel about it and then we will open it up for the commission. Um, I don't think I have a strong view about who ought to be the sender. But whoever the sender is, it's coming on behalf of the town of Lyme, and so it, it ought to represent the town's views. I don't want to jump ahead, but are we going to have a chance to discuss the substance of the letter? Or? I think we should do that now. Okay, so I just my two cents. I thought this was a nicely written letter, very lucid, very persuasive. My one, the one thing that didn't didn't um, click for me was this section four. Uh, headwater and tributary conservation. So in, in this section, as I read it, it basically says, well, there's going to be effects from climate change and somebody ought to pay for those. And so we think that the, the uh, dam operators ought to put aside money to deal with potential, potential impacts of climate change. I, I, I mean, leaving aside the question of whether climate change results in increased severity or frequency of, of storms and things like that, assuming that it does, the, the, the dam operator is not responsible for that. In, in the rest of this letter, we're basically saying, look, the water level goes up and down, it causes road erosion, that, that's a cost to the town of Lyme, the, the, the dam operator ought to pay for that. There's impacts on the ecology of the river or the fish population or migration of the river that are attributable to the operation, the existence and operation of the dams, the, 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 the licensee ought to pay for those. With this section, we're just saying, look, there's stuff happening in the world that's maybe bad, and they ought to be taxed and put money aside to pay for that. If anything, I mean, the, 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 the hydroelectric dam operator is not responsible for climate change, and if anything, the, their operation of the dam is mitigating those those effects. So, I don't know. When I read this, I, I, I thought this last little section four was just a throwaway. It seemed, it made this letter to me seem less serious and more like a money grab. And uh, I would be in favor of removing it and removing the corresponding bullet point in the conclusion. Okay. 
But you so. But otherwise, I thought this was. Great. That was fine, and it would be okay to come from the conservation commission. It's okay with with me, I, or or alternatively, we could have it signed jointly. Okay. Oh, sure. Okay. Um. Ben. Yeah, that's fine with me. How do you feel about that number four? Well, it, you know, David Drake, we don't, they don't have any control of that. Um, there's going to be pro more problems going forward. Um, it's likely that there are, put that way. Um. Okay, so. Um, yeah, but if you have those kind of problems, what you want is more sources of electricity that don't generate higher, uh, you know, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. That's what, that's what these guys are already doing. I mean, when you tax something, you get less of it. Presuming you folks have um, worked diligently on this, which I agree, I, I like the letter a good deal. I also do have a copy of the 2020 letter that was actually voted at town meeting to go in response to the FERC uh, dam relicensing. How would you feel if it was a joint signatory? That may be an easy question. And if we removed paragraph four, or it's numbered four, headwater and tributary. I will open it here and then we'll go to Blake after for comments. Yes, ma'am. I think we would be delighted to have it co-signed. I think that would strengthen the letter. Um, the only thing that we were really, I think, um, thinking might be something to consider for the headwaters is that they should anticipate that the headwaters might increase the river flow and that they should be prepared to deal with that mm -hmm. and not um, otherwise be responsible for climate change. That would be nice to find someone, but <laughs> I agree that we, we okay. should not yet. Okay. Ross. One way to look at it is, and, uh, this is just hypothetical, uh, is the dam wasn't there, the water would be a lot farther away from Mines Road than it is today. <clears throat> and in terms of global warming and excess uh, uh, heavy uh, rainfalls, uh, the dam is just allowing the river to start at a higher level and therefore the effect of global warming might be said to be worse because of the presence of the dam. Uh, obviously this company is not going to pay for any damage uh, unless they're forced to, and uh, they've had a very good record so far of avoiding any responsibility for high water. Yes, my my take on that would be that it, I hate to give them anything they can hold on to and make us look like we are doing a money grab, rather than here's what we've seen, here's the direct result. I agree with what you said, but I think this gives them a really good handle to just throw our objections out the door. Is there someone else here who wishes to speak to this before? I'm sure that Blake would like to comment. Yes, Blake. Well, well the first thing is that um, Great River Hydro has flowage rights to the uh, substantial area um, that the Connecticut River drains um, going north above the dam. So th that we have given them, and I think that that should carry with it some responsibility to help maintain those flow flowage right areas in such a way that does not cause harm to the communities within that, which I think in one I've seen is uh, 30 towns are, are with, within this area. And I, I don't think we should just be you know, signing off that Great River Hydro will do the right thing. Um, 
in terms of trying to minimize the impact of um, worsening conditions on, on these communities that have given Great River Hydro a license to um, to operate and to and to draw on these resources. Um, and then the other thing, it, it is in Great River Hydro's interest to manage these resources in such a way that disruption to flow patterns is minimized. That meaning that that it's in their interest to have flow rates that are constant rather than um, widely fluctuating. And again, um, mitigation to help ensure that, I, I think, is, is important, not just to the benefit of the towns, but to the benefit of the op dam operator. So um, I guess the point of wanting this mitigation fund in place is to not um, leave it to um, chance or goodwill that Great River Hydro is going to um, look after these look after these matters and if you look at the excuse me the other objections that have been raised uh, um, all of them have to do with an absence in Great River's application of any formal attention to anything. They're not committing to monitoring um, impacts of, of their uh, operational plan on, on erosion. They are not committing to improving recreational access in the river to anything um, beyond what exists. And they are not committing to doing anything that would um, enhance the, the passage of migratory fish species up the river to restore those historic um, migrations. So I, I don't think there's really anything that we've seen to this point that suggests that the, the Great River Hydro <coughs> is going to do anything um, that of any to any extent um, that causes them to um, compromise their profit margins. Remember this is a for-profit privately held company um, and certainly the town of Lyme and any municipality knows the track record of Wilder Dam operators in terms of their sense of responsibility um, for the impacts that the operation of that dam causes. And I, again, I just don't, um, if we see that there's a matter of concern and it's not being addressed in the license, I, I just don't think we should um, leave it and it's a matter of good faith that the operator will do the right thing. Um, and this is not just a position held that our Conservation Commission took. If you read the comments of other Conservation Commissions or towns that have been filed, there are similar concerns about the absence of, of accountability on a variety of factors in their license application and seeking fair to um, make sure that those that are, are addressed. So I think that's the concern. Um, I, you know, it's, we look at uh, this past summer, obviously Vermont got hit much harder um, by uh, flooding issues um, than the state of, than Connecticut River Corridor did. But that isn't to say that sometime up the road that couldn't change. Um, so again, I, I would argue that there's good reason to leave Section 4 as, as part of this because of the um, overarching concern about um, Great River's commitment to 
manage the resources that we've given them, essentially. We're giving them 30, 40 year license uh, to, to do as whatever the permit allows. And I think it's important that we uh, make sure that there's some level of accountability, especially um, in matters climate related issues, which I don't see anybody saying are going to get less, frankly. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate you spelling that out for us. Um, yeah. um, I was just going to suggest a potential compromise to remove the sort of the, I don't know, the, the silliness that you were observing with respect to climate change. I don't have the wording in front of me, but could you even just strike the climate change and just talk about any future changes that might affect the flow that we would be concerned about and so not talk about causes? Would that, that address your issue? Managing the river soda as to minimize uh, damage to the town Correct. without right. going into climate. But we don't know that. If you want to include tributaries and, and the watershed. Right. So there would be a couple of key sentences in here which could be removed and then rework the rest. They definitely have the control of the flow. Right. Even right. In, in heavy rain events. <coughs> Is that off. something that most of you folks would agree to? Yeah. yeah? Yes. 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 So, um, shoot. I see David has his pen out. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to mark this up here, but I can. I can if you could out. work on that, and we could send it to the Conservation Commission, and I think I would be agreeable to that. So you leave the essence of the fund creation, but not yeah. tying it to. Yeah, the if we're saying you ought to put aside some money in case what you're doing damages the flow or the ecology of the, of the, of the riverbank yeah, or, the, water or the water, or right. that, that's fine. I, where, where it kind of catches for me is where you say, you know, we believe the license should require the creation of a mitigation fund to reduce the impact of climate change right. related disruption. Right. Yeah. That kind of yeah, so okay, so we will see what we can do with that and I think we need to, um, there's a deadline for this, which is coming May 22. 22nd. 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 I thought I saw the 27th. That's somewhere. what I no, thought I saw, too. Uh, originally, somebody had said the 27th, and I think it was in a document that you got from me. Yeah. 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 Yeah letter with double signatories and a carbon copy to go with the letter also of the resolution from 2020. Yes. And then the other change would be number four being edited with the approval of the commission and this board that we would then go ahead and come in and sign it so that it gets, it should go out probably tomorrow. Um, and since we have a quorum too, can we just um, sort of say the commission agrees completely <laughs> with whatever you I've never done that, but I like that. I think you guys need to have noticed your meeting, don't you? Oh, yeah. 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 We, well, we told her maybe we were coming here. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to have an emergency meeting <laughs> to approve that. I don't know. Well, I think they'd have to have an emergency meeting if they were all going to sign it. Um, but if it's from, I mean, or, I mean you're, you're changing stuff, but you're not really changing, um, your yeah. it's not really but I think if the commission decided to just have Blake sign it, which it looks to me like you did, right. then yeah. Blake could still sign it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have a consensus that right. the majority of the commission agrees we're going to have Blake sign it and the board sign it. We think we agree. So our consensus, I had a motion. I'll second. And, okay. Those in favor, say aye. aye. David, aye. And Judy, aye. So if we can get that little scooch worked out, we will have it in the mail, we hope, tomorrow. I think so. Excellent. A point of information. This has to be an electronic filing. 
and there are very specific um, steps that need to be followed and those are I, Dina I think are with the Connecticut River Conservancy and I will track them down for you so you, you, I'm sure you ha have them but it, it has to be electronic Do you know those technical internet related problems? Yes, yes. <laughs> that's, that's her forte. <laughs> and now and we're. As long as no one's around to hear me <laughs> Thank you, Blake, for your help with all this, and thank you all. This is good work. I think it's great. And, and Dina, you have a copy of, of the 2020 that can be scanned? I think I. Have that? Oh, yeah, I have that. Okay. Yep, I have that. I think. Um, in order to make the changes on the, the, the letter that the Conservation Commission wrote, um, I think I only got that in PDF. No, 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 we got it. We got it in work? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Okay, sure, sure. good. Sure I'd like to thank the Board and the Conservation Commission for this work. Thank yes. you very much. Very, very well. That's all the thank Conservation you. Commission. Yeah, they did a lot. We're just sitting in the corner, you know, <laughs> picking at stuff. <laughs> no, but, but without your support, yes. Yes. it makes a huge difference uh, yes. for the impact of being presented with that kind of view. I think, I think it's, so it's good. We hope we will get some positive outcome. We have fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best we can do at this point. All right, thank you. And, and, and those of you who have spoken to the Connecticut River uh, folks, do they have any, have they said anything about what they think the likelihood of getting changes to the license is? They didn't directly speak to that. I think they were um, saying that intervener status and even the uh, fact that several towns came forward with it um, would increase the likelihood and I think they were kind of silent on how, how much, you know, what the percentage would then if it would be. But I think they were hopeful. We'll see, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I heard them say uh, at their last meeting that they had changed the flow of the river and the amount of fluctuation that can exist. It's from four feet now to down to two feet, and the um, changes have to be much more gradual. Absolutely. I don't know if the gradual yeah, the will change it much, times. but certainly the depth of the flow will make a big difference. And what Meg had said to us was, if you have intervener status and they don't address the things that you have put forward in your letter and with the intervener uh, letter itself, that you have the right to say, hey, we told you we were going to intervene if you didn't. So you have the right to, at that point, um, object if they haven't done sufficient changes. Okay, well. We hope we don't get there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you all. And I think um, we have, I think we have our road agent waiting to come in. And I think we have. Um, I think I'll go free out your car. Yes. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. 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 I know, we were lucky. That's like a presidential debate. Oh, is this 3D? So, no, actually, let me, I'll, I'll, Thank I, you. I told Judy, so I, I have, this is the second one is a yard sale camera, and I wanted to see if it works better then or worse <laughs> than the one I've been using, so. I thought you were going to have a 3D. No, 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 that's more, more work than necessary. <laughs> I'm going to need a makeup person here to sit at home before I come. <laughs> Scott. I hope you're going to use the poor quality camera when you get done. Well, you know, I mean, I could just get, take the audio recording and stick the picture of the town offices in there. <laughs> okay. And you break another truck. <laughs> I 
get a pretty good bill from Reeds. Um, I think you guys get the copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does look like it's pretty good. Um, I read it and I couldn't really figure out, like in layman's terms, what was broken. Can you? It was um, <clears throat> the hot, the heat exchanges. The hot and cold side. One side was totally plugged. Mm -hmm. The other side was. Like, there you go. Uh, and that causes the engine to surge back yeah. and forth. Oh, interesting. I'd like to take it out of the emergency vehicle. Um, because it's I such mean, a little bill. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that isn't all that we put into it. I put up. I need other stuff, but we want it to our shop. Okay. So I believe it qualifies to come out of there. It does qualify, but. Yes, ma'am? Just so we don't have to play the switcheroo game again like we did last year, where we paid for it out of fund. And, and then we then paid we it back. And then we ended up having enough funds, so we paid it back. Um, if I take it out of his vehicle repair line right now, and then we get to December, and you don't have the money to have it in there, then we can take it from the capital reserve fund. So then you would do the switch, the switch, switch at the end of the way. Call it at the end of the year. No, you guys would vote to have it come from that. Okay. As long as Scott's okay with that. No, I know you're talking. I know. Oh, sorry. Well, I did. I'm gonna. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna take it from your vehicle repair line. Yeah, that's then, fine. To pay then right towards now. the end of the year. That's fine. I'm just. If you're out of money, he's concerned. Yeah. You will reimburse it. Me, to go into. Right. right. It's <laughs> but it's a bottom line budget anyway, too. Can do it. It's a bottom, Yeah, I know that was your comment. Anyway, you do it. <laughs> but because it's a bottom line budget, it's. Which is, which is fine. Okay. So, Ben's okay with any way you can do it. Uh, <laughs> David, are you okay with the switcher? Uh, to me, it's just cleaner to just pay it and not worry about it. From a purely political point of view, we should not be describing anything here as a switcher. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make sure that you're well, listening. We're on tape for I said I like to make sure that you're really listening to me. <laughs> okay. When we, I don't have to explain it. You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. We can reimburse it at the end of the year if it's needed. Okay. We need a motion or? Oh, I think we maybe we should. All right, I move that we go ahead with what we're talking about. <laughs> Although well, I don't, it seems to me if Scott's just repairing the vehicle on right. his vehicle fund, we probably don't need to move out. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. But, but that's our intent. Yeah. But our intent is yeah, the sense of the board is it. The sense okay. of the board. Right. Okay. <sighs> All right. And next up, we have Go For Broke. There's um, Scotty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where Sean. Sean's oh, right Sean's here. Sean's here. Look, come up to the table, Sean. Oh, boy. You want to start? Uh, <laughs> 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 no, he doesn't. <laughs> okay. 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 Walk us through. What's this? Which one's this? Uh, oh, this is our guy, Chris. Um, so, earlier this spring, um, well, Scott and I have been talking about this for a long time, but the Skiway um, parking lot for years has caused multiple issues, not only during the winter, but in the summertime. Um, you know, the, the race traffic that comes from Canaan on Fridays and Saturday nights going up to Bradford or wherever they're racing. Uh, they tend to use that big parking lot as the uh, we'll stop there and party on the way home area. Um, because it's next to the road and they can park their trailers and whatnot, the parking lot itself during the wintertime is it's just hazardous for many reasons. You know, they, they don't have they don't have staff, they don't have appropriate signage or 
you know, labeled entryways and exits and, and those kinds of things. And then once people get out of their cars, they tend to walk up the middle of the road, um, thinking that it's just the walkway. I uh, know everybody that lives out there, travels that road, has to <clears throat> slow down, wait for them to move or not. Um, you know, so it it's hazardous to them, it's hazardous to the motorists, it's difficult for the highway guys to plow when there's people in the road, cars in the road. Uh, so when the guardrail people came out to check on the other project, the road project, we asked them to measure off that parking lot um, and give us a quote for guardrails to go the entire length of their outside parking lot. We know that that is a three rod road, so we're well within our right and limits to, to set these guardrails. And, um, you know, that comes to us as a, at a cost of almost $33,000. For just the guardrails? Just and the guardrails. Yep. So, to have them installed, 30, 32950 That's 33 Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's the new math. Yes. <laughs> or maybe the old. The round. Um, <clears throat> are you doing both sides of the road with guardrails? Or just the side that the parking lot's on? The parking lot. For now. Because, yeah, we, we probably won't do the other side. Until you do Because of the ditch, ditch line. But. The ditch line. I mean, the other thing is that, I mean, all you got to do is ride out. Yeah. That's why the pavement's getting broke up on that. On the ditch side. On the ditch because side. they're crowding all the traffic over there when they park there. Okay. Because they park. I mean, some of the times where the whole width, almost the width of the, the plow the off the road. Mm -hmm. Which is. So the parking lot, I don't know if that's north, maybe the north side. It's of the, the east side. Well, yeah. Whatever. 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 Northeast. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, and then the other side will be addressed when we are able to do the road. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I would think pulling the markers and maybe move the ditch back towards the road. Okay, and is that something that could be done this year too, or not? The delaying yeah. the markers. Maybe. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, post, I think it could come <coughs> You know, it ends up that the road, you know, your whole right side of your vehicle is off the road. I mean, that's how much it gets worn down from people having to drive. I mean, we had pictures on oh. the border to see the pictures. Yeah, I don't know if they did we have, we have yeah. plenty that they can see. Dozens mm -hmm. of pictures to support. You know, we spent all winter long taking pictures of vehicles that are just parked wherever. And we also get concerns about people, people that park in the parking lot, and when you pull out of the parking lot, how they line, you know, they line up and park, and there's a place, obviously, they can drive and pull out. And because they don't realize it's a road, or just because whatever reason, you know, there's, you're always driving through there, almost hitting a car, because they just pull out. Oh. Okay. And it's very dangerous that way. So we'll do some signage too in addition to the guardrails maybe? Yeah, so you know inevitably what will happen with the guardrail placement is that you know the skiway will use their entrance in which is by the lodge and then everything will be enclosed and they'll have to come back out their exit entrance which they already have. So Which is on the, it's you know, they're kind on of the side more side. western side. Which I think they'll take that down and go up. Anyway. So what you want from us is some authorization to purchase and have installed these guardrails now. So um, when are we going to talk to the ski people? I think, like we, I think it's next week. It's next week. So there, there are some obligations should be on them. Or they created the problem that could help. Uh, well, that's part of your discussion about the whole road work that's going to happen out there. but. 
as yeah. far as putting in the guardrails. No, we should do well, that. that's not their decision. Well, wait a second. Even before we decide whether to put in the guardrails, do we have any expectation about what the reaction of the skiway folks is going to be to the installation of these guardrails? Um, I suspect they won't be happy. Um, but, but you know, this has been this has been a 24-year battle, um, and up until about four years ago, they had a pretty good system. They were really good. They worked with us. They had people out there all the time. They were really taking care of things. It's under new management, and we've reverted all the way back to day one. Um, you know, there's no cooperation. The, the cones that have been put in the, what they consider a crosswalk, are actually, they've put them so that the vehicles are supposed to stop, which, no, that's a road. Um, you know, it's just been a battle, and every time you bring it up with them, we don't have staff, we don't have this, it's your road, you just tow people, you do whatever you want to do, but it's, our, it's your road and we're not going to make people, make our employees stand out there and tell people they can't park there. And they don't. So All right. But from a negotiating <laughs> point of view, we're about to sit down and meet with these guys and we're going to ask for a whole bunch of stuff. So if we do something that they're not going to like right at the onset, that could be helpful to us. That might uh, demonstrate to them that we're serious and that we're not screwing around anymore. Uh, but it also might, it might have the opposite effect. They might feel like, oh, well, why don't you talk to us about this? We could have fixed those problems without your doing this, and, and, and now this has inflicted harm on us. So I just wonder uh, if we maybe, I mean, is there is there stuff that they could do that would cause you to say, yeah, it's, we don't need to spend that $33,000 because they're going to, they, they've promised to take care of it in another way, in a way that we're happy with. <coughs> it sounds like you were saying four years ago they were doing a pretty good job. And, they were, there were still problems, but they were willing to help and address those problems, whereas now, they, they're not. They, you know, I mean, I guess at this point I would ask the board, on behalf of the road agent, to authorize this money, and then we'll meet with Dartmouth College, and we'll see where that goes and how it works out, and then make our decision from there whether it's us that pays the full boat and puts them in, or it's them that want to help, or whether they're really willing to come up with some uh, positive, permanent solutions so that, number one, our motorists are safer, their own pedestrians are safer, because, you know, when people just walk down the road and then when you honk their horn and they give you the finger, ask you what's your problem, or just keep walking, you know, you're not going to... They want to get At some point, they're not going to run into Mr. Nice Chief of Police. They're going to have somebody jump out of their car, and then I'm going to be out there for a different reason. So I, I would like to move that we authorize the 33000 and the installation, and definitely we're meeting next week. This will be on the agenda. What we yeah. with them. But it needs to be done. It needed to be done with or without their cooperation, so I think we should move ahead with it. Fine with me, but let's, if you guys could hold off on actually signing any contracts to get this stuff in for a couple of weeks just so we can meet with yeah. them. Maybe, you know, maybe we can work stuff out with them in a way that's amicable and that, yeah. um, They just, they had a window. Do uh, you remember what that window was? You know, that they could get us in. Oh, it was like Memorial Day. Yeah. yeah it's the end, end of the month. month. Yeah. End of the month. Well, you'll know next week and they can either yeah, we will. Either we'll way, because they reached out for the, not for this one, but for the other one, mm -hmm. which I'm not doing. Okay, so I've moved. We're going to authorize it. I'll the amount, and then you'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Judy, aye. So you are set with that. Thank you both Thank you. for coming in. We'll see what happens next week. We'll see what happens next week. Sean, when they're parking off the road and working illegal, how come you don't just go down there and they write a whole slew of tickets? 15. 15. Yeah, I have all of them. You know, the, yeah. the problem is, is that out there, our computer system has no service. 
So if I write I someone so. a ticket, I have to that's what I thought I read. do all of my questioning and finding out all their information over the radio, and it takes up lots and lots of time. Um, you know, if they had, we had a cell, if we had cell, had service, a cell service or internet service, you know, um, you know, it would be easier. And but we don't have that. So uh, you know, we've used a wrecker in the past and. You know, there are some record companies that will come do it. There are other record companies that will be like, yeah, well, we don't want to come out there and do that. But, you know, so they are fighting with other people. But Maybe we could ask it, the college it, to install a cell tower on the top of the mountain. <laughs> wow, that's a great idea. If they had reset a landline, that would be wonderful. But Once you get to your house, your house. Yeah, I mean, that's really yeah. that. Um, the, 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 there's a potential for completely accidental injuries or problems, medical problems up there yeah. with, with the ski way, and there's no way to... There's no, there's way, no way to contact them. No. That is just really crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to really focus on that next week. Yeah, you need to generate a list while you're yes, on this stuff. You guys are going to be there when we meet with them. Yes, I think that's important. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and let's everybody work on a list so we know what we don't miss something. Okay. I'll print out all the photos that we have. Thank you. Like that. Maybe we print them all. It's true, guys. He's bored. Yeah, it is true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sounds like you need a phone booth out there. <laughs> well, there's one out there, but there I think it's disconnected. One. Yeah. Fine. They don't do those anymore. Yeah. Well, because yeah. nobody knows how to use it. <laughs> you need a cell tower. What? i got to put money in there? What's money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. We're just having too much fun here today. Love um, it. Oh, oh, oh. Sean. 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 <laughs> oh, thank you, Phil. <laughs> that voice came right out. I like it. Okay. Hey, Judy. Yes. Rich just brought up a good point. Yes. Um, I want to make it known that the thirty-three thousand dollars is for nine hundred feet of guardrails. Okay. Just so that it's on record. Thank you. And nine hundred feet and thirty-three inches. <laughs> 900, exactly. <laughs> um, great. Will you be coming back? Because I want to talk to you about the uh, plans for the common for August. I can come back, absolutely. Would you? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good point. I didn't see you waving. I'm sorry. I was having too much fun. Yeah, I was hiding behind all these people. Oh, that's true. <laughs> If I, if I might sneak in a public comment question that just occurred to me. Yes. Is there a uh, posted parking plan for the common that people can think about? Parking plan? Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, we, it, it, because we come in meetings and people say, we'd like to use the common for this and that, and we say, what's your parking plan? Do we right. have a recommendation? I mean, no. yes I or no is a perfectly acceptable no. answer. Good. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Well, we don't have one here, but they have to meet with Sean. And then so they work does. one out. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. The You're perfect welcome. answer. Um, okay. Let's just keep having fun. Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire, otherwise known as CPCNH. This is Hebe's. Is she still with us? Yeah. <laughs> um, Are we prepared to sign this and move forward, or are we still waiting for information? So, so I, I believe where we are with this is that we submitted this to council. Yep. The council sent us back comments, including you know noting that we can't change the agreement. Right. But a couple of his comments were things like, it's unclear to me how this works. I don't understand what would happen in this case. Um, if our council is telling us that about significant features of the agreement, it seems to me that it's hard for the select board to say, oh, well, don't worry about it, we'll just sign it. So we, we went back to Joe and, and explained that to him, and our, our council, Joe Driscoll, and said, can you please reach out to CPCNH and get answers to these questions? 
and just just enough to be able to assure us that these things that you don't you tell us you don't know how they work don't operate in a way that materially prejudices the town lawn. And I think Joe said he would do that. I don't I think we probably heard from him. He's in the middle of a bunch of litigation right now. Right. So I and in the meantime, we heard from Primex. So that's done. Yeah, we, we okay. did also reach out to our insurance right. company, and the insurance company's comments were great. They said, no problem. Right. We're okay with all of this, essentially. So the one open thing I think that's, that's a holdup on our part is just getting some reassurance from town council that the things that he noted that he didn't understand how they worked don't work in a way that uh, materially prejudices the interests of the town of Juan. I right. don't think they do, but I'm not town council. Right. right. And I have sent um, the contact persons, I can't remember what the gentleman's name is, from CPCNH. The nice British guy? Yes. Well, I don't know. I just got a name and a contact number from James Graham to Joe. So okay. he should be able to, I, I would hope that that would be ready by next week. Okay, so we pump one more one more Sorry. time. Thank yeah. you, David, for that recap. And KB, uh, we're still waiting for one more confirmation from town council. So well, I would say we're at eight out of ten. <laughs> Maybe nine out of ten. <laughs> Maybe nine out of ten. Okay. So perhaps by next meeting? Well, yes. The fellow's name is Andrew Hatch, by the way. Okay. Yeah. A British, British, nice British guy. <laughs> He's very helpful, and um, I mean, we could ask him to reach back to council if that's something that would help close the loop. Well, I've already sent council the information to contact yep. the person that James gave me. So. Yep. I'm I, sure I think it's okay time. right now, but thank you for that offer. If we still end up with. A zero response will maybe have you do that. Okie dokie. <laughs> Okie dokie is right. Um, moving on. Sean is here, and I spent some time, actually quite a lot of time yesterday, looking at the um, use of the common application we've gotten for the end of August. And I had this outrageous thought, it wasn't even cocktail, <laughs> that we've got these food trucks coming in and hopefully they all have health inspection stickers. We can get uh, our health person to check on that. But What is this permit? What food? We have is... food trucks coming to the common? Why was it yes. I have not seen it. It hasn't been approved yet. I know. Oh, it, okay. It's the, the use of the common application for the end of August by the Lyme Foundation. They're having an event. They want to have food trucks come in. Right, oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so this, yes, that was. Uh, so dated. I thought yes. maybe this is a good event and a good time to try again to have the back of the common road one way, one lane, and the food trucks and participants could park along the edge of the common in the other lane, but not on the common. People could kind of get used to it, see how it worked, see if they liked it. I wondered how you might feel about that. So I guess the First thing we have to do is I need to reach out to the DOT because even if we, I mean, we can basically do what we want with the back of the common. However, we have we have to abide by however they say we have to make the both ends east oh, and west ends entrance and exit. Transition now. If we chose, if the board chose on that day to close off the back of the common oh, to that? one or to you know local traffic, make it a one way for a day and mm -hmm. let those trucks park along there and do their thing, then that would be probably well within 
the town's well, purview. Well, and that's what I was thinking, for the day, for the event, so then everything is centered right there. <coughs> And I don't know. I mean, that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, get a um, sense of it. It would certainly, you know, allow for parking, allow for the vendors to not be on our common and the cars to not be on our common. And it would be a directed event where they have only one way to go. Well, think about that because I thought it might be, first of all, as a user, if I was there, it would be fun to have everything right there, not some food trucks here, some food trucks there. Uh -huh. And, you know, we've talked different times about eventually maybe doing something different with the road at the back of the common. Yep. And let's just keep trying these things and see how they work, see if people are interested or not, and mm -hmm. if we can close it for the day, that would be, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Much safer, too. I, I will say all the food trucks will need their own insurance. I just want to say that out loud. Well, when we get to actually working on a permit, we can say that, and we need to make sure they all have... Do we need a motion to, to do that for that day? You... I don't think that you need to vote it. Well, yeah, why don't you? Because you're going to have to prove it. Just because this is bigger than what Jordan and I sort of felt we should be addressing in our office. Okay. So, be good. So, I'll move it. I'll second. Okay. Is there discussion from our audience before we vote? Makes sense. <laughs> Sounds good. good. Okay. Ben on. David on. And Judy on. Okay. So we're going to try. Before we move off of this, can I just oh, okay. follow up a little? Oh, sure. Oh. I'll ask a follow-on. You know, Sean, we've had these discussions about changing the way the traffic flows on the around the common and mm -hmm. changing the parking, and we've sort of. Uh, I, it, I don't need to be the motivator here, but if if we actually want to do that, I think the way to do it would be to put down some sort of a written plan. Here's what we're proposing, and yes. notice that, and put it up on the town website, and then we can have a meeting where that's on the agenda and people could come in and express their concern or their enthusiasm for it or whatever but but because I think right now what we have is a lot of sort of nebulous discussion in the minutes about changes and you know where we uh, one or two details slip out and, and somebody reading those wouldn't really necessarily be able to figure out what we're really talking about right. <laughs> so if, if we think that's a something we want to do I'm certainly I mean, if our chief of police is telling us this would make the common safer and it would alleviate parking problems that we have and it would alleviate uh, other abuses that we have with respect to people parking in the wrong places and destroying the lawn, and I, I, you know, even if it makes some people unhappy, I'm willing to move forward. Okay. I've, I've been married a long time. I'm used to making people unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that I'll mention and bring up at this time now that David has said this is that you know there's nothing that says now that the town owns on the common mm -hmm. that you know we can't just let people park on the back side of the common which is most often what I do I'd rather have them back there than on the Dorchester Road side or the Main Street side which yeah. I will say in public that all of our no parking signs from the Lime Country store north on the common have disappeared. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that's from the DOT plows hitting them uh, and not being replaced, but I'm going to put in a request to have them put back up. Um, there seems to be a, now they're pulling over just right at the intersection by the church, they seem to be pulling off right there. I tell people quite often, hey, you need to move, and they're like, well, there's no signs. And I said, I get it, but yeah. it's no parking. And so, Thank you for that request. So along with those signs, I might propose that the town uh, posts signs on the back side of the common, saying, you know, 
parking is authorized on this side, mm -hmm. but not on the grass. You know, if we put a, if we paint a white stripe yep. down the side of the asphalt on the grass, right at the grass, and leave it at that for now, with some signs saying, authorized parking, stay off the grass. Mm -hmm. And see where that gets us. Because I've noticed if I'm out and about when school is mostly letting out, that right side, the back of the comma and the right side, is um, headed towards the school, half full of people waiting for, to pick up their kids. Yes. And, and not pulled over. I mean, they're in pretty much the travel lane. And it just seems like the use of that area, that's one of the main uses. Right. On it's already a parking lot. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yes. I mean, if, if, Sean, if, you, if that's what you wanted, if, you, if that's your advice to us, is that even as an interim step that we try that approach, I still think the way to, for us to do that is to put it in writing, yep. have, a, have a meeting, notice meeting that people have a chance. Because, you know, there's going to be people who live on the common who are going to be upset by any change. Right. Or, or there may be people like that. And, we ought to give people a chance to see what we're proposing and, and come in and make comments or, or try to persuade us that there's a better way to do something. Yeah, otherwise, people are just going to simply get annoyed at some big change that they didn't have any opportunity to have input into. Sue, thank you. I was going to suggest that given people's inability to read and absorb what signs say. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Sue McKenzie! If you're going to make one side of the road essentially a parking lot right. and the other side a travel lane, then mark out the parking spaces. Yes. Right. Line yes. down the middle and then each parking space. Those they know about. Yep. Yep. That's a good idea, Mr. Brown. I will also mention that that we had a session to talk about this and so yeah, it wouldn't yeah, hurt yeah, to yeah. review those notes and see what what people said then. Oh I can tell you who said what. Yes. Well, I think, I just, think it's, just review what people said. I think it's worthwhile if you just have a separate meeting, mm -hmm. and I know you don't like to keep having separate meetings, but or or designate you know forty five minutes of one of your meetings to just this topic yep. Yep. after Sean develops this plan. I think we should go forward. We've we've batted this around for years right. and years, mm -hmm. and it seems like nature is taking its course. This is kind of how it's being used. We, we've tried it maybe a couple of times with special events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the time to, to give it. And I like the idea between Sean and Sue, striping it out, see what happens. I think you'll find it, it with the exception of a few people for whom I have a lot of sympathy. Um, I think it will work, but it will take a little adjustment. Yeah, the other issue that falls in this same basket is probably the uh, uh, lighted crosswalk in front of the school. Yes. If we wanted to do something with that, and I would say the same thing. We ought to put something in writing about what we're proposing and have a hearing and let people come and express their concern. Yep, yep. And, and I would hope that the technology over the last few years may have even improved. Yeah. Well, you see them all over the Upper Valley now. And they, mm -hmm. they, the person crossing the road pokes the button. They're not flashing 24-7, right. just when somebody wants to cross. Lots of times, you, those signs, you don't even need a button anymore. You just wait. Oh, it's just a... Is that right? Yes. But it's, it's they're it's innocuous it's now. I mean, <laughs> they're everywhere. Yeah, they're you know what? I'm sympathetic to someone who says, my house is right in front of there. Every time somebody pushes the button, my curtains are going to be lighting up orange. And well, well, maybe I'm, there's I'm, a way I'm, to block I'm the line. I'm not sympathetic because I'm guarantee the number of people that are going to poke that button and cross, especially at night, is going to be close to zero. Yeah, probably. It would be big meetings at night would be, but mostly I think it's the daytime with the kids going to the library and coming and back. And at the same time, the, if it's a night meeting, the car headlights are going across the windows. So we've got, I guess, a couple more things a to add to that A couple more things list. to add to our list, yes. Do you want to pick a date for this meeting so that Sean has a little pressure on them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I keep picking these wrong words. Incentive. 
<laughs> the word incentive. Oh, I do. No, incentive. Okay. Um, in incentivize. The next, our next meeting is the 30th. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Keep it up and you'll pressure me right into resigning. June, <laughs> June, June 13th, 27th. <laughs> how, about, how about June 13th? Is the 13th or the 27th June 13th seem reasonable is, to you? Uh, let me make sure that June 13th is all right. Let yeah. me see if I don't have to retire before June 13th. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and, I'll be here. Okay. So we'll shoot for the 13th. Okay. Um, and the, the other thing that we're going to talk about shooting for is maybe on the 31st, the, um, the ordinances, the two ordinances, the liquor yeah. ordinance and the... Uh, Public hearing. I'll set up that public, public hearing. Um, yes, for those two ordinances. Um, uh, what date? Uh, I think it's May. Thir May thirtieth. Have to look and see if I have enough time to post for that. Oh, okay. If not, what? <laughs> Just, okay. You might have to go to the twenty seventh, but I'll look and see. Oh, you can vote things on the same day, on the 13th. Oh my goodness, that would be really Public hearing, we've already got people coming All out. All right, let's just do the 13th. Public hearing and the... Uh, ordinances. Oh, good Lord. Well... And the public. I think you might want to pick a different place for your meeting. <laughs> this doesn't hold very many people. What, what's the other public yeah, hearing? We'll think about that. There's a couple of uh, ordinances that are up for... Draft ordinances. One that would prohibit public drinking, I think, and another that would prohibit uh, dumping of yard waste and snow into the public roadway. I have that about right, Sean? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I would think that there wouldn't be very many people showing up for either one of them. I'm going to come in and complain that you've got a drink. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe you can, you can well, dump yard waste you if you're drunk like it, at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 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 it's it happened well, once before, so I can tell you, <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, and, and events like the, the one that's planned for August um, on the common, if people are having a cocktail across the road, and they can't wander across the road with their right. cocktail right. onto the common. So I think it's <laughs> well, you if he's already resigned. <laughs> yeah, he's already resigned. <laughs> well, just to resign that, I mean, I'm worried about it. Okay, very good. Now I'm totally lost on my agenda. Um. So we have this common application <laughs> since we were, I brought it up. And do we need to act on this today? I think we should look at this and think about it. Um, they're going to have food trucks. It's the end of August. They're going to have musicians. They are anticipating a bunch Lots of, people. of people. 150 to 200 people. Um, 15 musicians. Two to three food trucks, eight worker vehicles, um, Well, you can't approve it until they have a, a, they have a parking, parking plan. plan anyways. But, yep. And um, they did say that they either have or will be talking to Sean. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next meeting for that. Okay. Yeah. You could encourage them that you're okay with it, and we can tell them that you're okay and supportive of it, yeah. and to work things out with Sean, and, and once that's done, then you can sign it. Yeah, as long as Sean's Just okay with it. Right. Um, we are conceptually okay with it. There you go. Perfect. So I believe August 24th. How many bent? Okay. We're working this is the Lion Foundation. Right? What's the August twenty fourth, five p.m. to eight p.m. Is it just a party, or is there some uh, thematic focus? Well, it's you know, community. I think it's just together. community gathering. It's a party, and I think the Lion Foundation wants people to know what they do. And it's kind of fundraiser. I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
don't believe so. I didn't see anything about it. So. Now, I don't know about the food trucks. That's probably one of the things we need to figure out. Well, that's why so, live music, that. gains and activities, Upper Valley food trucks, or local restaurant, available food for purchase. Right. And, uh, et cetera. And that's why we brought it to you, because you have a general rule that there's no things, so the food trucks are considered commercial, but you can but certainly give permission. So we need to look at that, it's in your packet from today. Okay. Next meeting. Yes. Um, abatements. Well, we've already scheduled the public hearing. Thank you, Sean. That's done. You're Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Very You're good. welcome. Um, while we're scheduling, before we do abatements, we need to have a visit at a barn, 25 Market Street. They are looking for an easement for their barn. I think they have had an easement on the barn, okay. and then it was not renewed. But in order to renew it anyways, the select board has to go and visit it. Okay, so let's make that for our our May 30th meeting. Because um, we loaded up the June 13th meeting. And we can do our business and then if it's like the 30th meeting. So, are you just having a problem? Who knows? just plan it for the 11th. What is it that we need to look at on the other side? You have to look at the barn and you have to make sure that things haven't been done to it that shouldn't be. You'll get a it's whole back It's a historic barn. Oh, it's like a barn. It's a historical, yes. Yes. It's a historical easement. Yeah. Bob Knowles. their current positions are taking those $30,000. I don't know if one of those jobs All right. Now we have the One that we were reviewing in assessor's comments. Right. Yeah, I, I just want to note that I think Todd misunderstood, at least he misunderstood what my intention was in asking. I, I didn't want him to adjust the abatement the, 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 uh, the amount to reflect a different percentage. I just wanted to know what, the, what that produced in terms of numbers. I didn't ask him to adjust it. But he did. I well, no. he, he no. provided. Wait, let me finish. I asked him to provide to you the answer to the difference between the 40 and the 50 and the reasons why. I had him write something up, yes. just in case. Depending on what you end up voting, and, and then we can wrap this up. What was the net difference, do you know, between the two of them? I can tell you. She did figure it out. I asked her to figure it out. I was too lazy to go pull out it's, the old one. And well, the 50% is 28700 Reduction in taxes? Yes. Or in assessment. No, in assessment. No, and the, the um, what is this, 35 or 40% 40, 40 is 9500 Okay, so it, it amounts to a $19,000 $19, difference in assessment. Yep. And what does that yield in terms of the actual tax on the property? Plus or minus? That I don't know. Two and a half percent of that. Right? You want that dollar amount, correct? Right? Yeah. You know, just rough. 19000 No, it's 19000 Yeah, $19,000 right? is the difference. It's, yep. I figured I could just like to be. $462. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, and I think that, and I will just say this, that the chart that was sent to you <coughs> is the chart that is a, it's not a hard, hard and fast chart. It's 
a chart of percentages. It's a work chart. That um, assessors go by. Um, and you go down through the list where it says, okay, is the foundation in? That's 5%. Is the deck on? That's 10%. You know, it, That's just his rough, his way of calculating the overall percentage. It's, it's, yeah, it's all assessors. It's not just Todd's way. Um, so, so he did that according to what was on Rusty's list. And that's where the one that we sent out came from. Yeah, the 52%. What are you moving, Ben? I'm moving the Todd's uh, recommendation. The original the recommendation. The original one. Chose. Yeah. So a 40. Yeah. It's a 40. Okay. I'll second. David second. Uh -huh. <laughs> David? <coughs> yeah, I. Yeah. And Judy, I. Okay, we are going with the original. And uh, please thank Todd for us for doing that one again next week. Yes. Oh, he will. I will. There'll be a list for it. Be a list. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you should move. Um, so we move an assessment change of 9,500. 9,500 at 40%. Then moved, David seconded, 9,500. And we have somewhere we have. You have two things to sign. That thing to sign, yes. And a one thing to sign. And it is approved. Yeah, it's been brought to our attention that Todd's, but Todd does these nice little memos with yes. your signature on the bottom, which is great. The DRA oh, wants a settlement wants, agreement. No, they want this one signed. Oh, okay. we got our little report back from 2021 when they came and inspected us, and they have a lot of naughty, naughty notes in there about how we don't have the actual, oh, the uh, actual. document signed. Okay. Well, you, the board signed Todd's thing. It, but not that, so we just have to make sure they're both signed, I guess. Oh, and so... Was there anything of substance that they objected to? Depends on what you think is of, of substance. They brought it up. It was of substance. Well, I think it's interesting that they did it in 2021 and we just got it. <coughs> yeah. So I have no clue what was going on in 2021. Um, I think we were still in COVID probably and people were working from home and who knows what. Everybody is behind. Okay, so we have taken care of that one. Um, uh -huh. Do you know while we're on the yes, property tax and assessment issue, could you give us an update on what's going on with respect to Townwide reappraisement, re reassess or uh, reappraisal, and are we are we getting close to being able to put out an RFP or we already put out an RFP? I have not already put one out, but I can absolutely have one for you if that's what you guys want. Yeah. Do you need a motion from us? No, no. Yeah, I think we we should. Don't. I mean, I, my understanding was that we had sort of informally agreed that we should try to do this for the 2025 year, right? Yes, I think <coughs> we did. So we should get something out there and see if we can get someone to do it. Right. right. No, you've been well, and, 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 a, and an amount of money, too, to plan ahead for. So yeah. those are two important things, yes. Yep. Yeah, if we have enough to cover it, if not. Right. How are we coming time-wise for the rest of the meeting? We, we are coming pretty good time-wise for the rest of the meeting. Have a non public, but before we get to that, we have a de merger request. Okay, I just have a ditch, an electrician is working out there. Oh, okay, so you're antsy. Um, we have, where to go? A de merger request that our planning and zoning administrator has suggested that we deny. Did you all have a chance to read? 
through all of this information? Yeah. He did, although it didn't, didn't need to be, I don't see where it even needed to be denied because it's already demerged. I can't imagine those lots were merged. I don't think what lots are you talking about? Yes, yeah, see. Ball. No, I know that, but which lots? What do you what do you need to merge? Well, he's not he has, has, he's worried about that and his sister's lot. Well, I think there's a confusion there exactly because of that. I thought he was worried about what what I think he wants is to demerge the big area that's left with the house. He wants to demerge mer and his, you know, I have Charles a suggestion. House. We would like to have the planning and zoning administrator here with us at our next um, meeting perfect. with the tax maps and any other information that would help clarify. Yeah, well, it sounds like he wants, a, he, wants, well, he wants a subdivision. And can, I, can I suggest that you have the planning and zoning administrator speak with Mr. Balch first before he does more research and comes to the meeting to explain this? Because I think there is some confusion. Yeah, if there's confusion, we should get that sorted. Thank you. I'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Thank you. And can I yeah. just say it was kind of neat to get documents from 1892 to review as part of our Yeah, Yes, <laughs> you could read them. Oh, I, like, I, actually, I had a really hard time reading those. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Were they still using the, the, the best? The <laughs> um, okay, so this is next time. And we used to go with that. Reading the RSA was enlightening again. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Da -da, da -da. Non public. I do believe it is 11.32. Thank you all. Thank you Thank all. And I'm going to move that we go into non public session. Under <laughs> Thank you. C. Reputation for a hardship abatement request. 